You are listening to Nerd Best Friends, a podcast that covers the nerdy conversations you're already having, or wish you could. It's the nerdiest thing you'll do this week. Welcome back to another episode of Nerd Best Friends. I am Annalise, and I'm here with my best friend, Rob. Hey, it's me, Rob, your best friend, your super nerd, and your podcast host. Nerd Best Friends can be found wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe and follow us now. If you would like to support our podcast, subscribe at Nerd Best Friends on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Or if you'd like to give a one-time donation, find us at Nerd Best Friends on Venmo. This is episode 44, and we are getting you ready for the holiday season with this year's Nerd Gift Giving Guide. All the things for the nerds in your life, even if it's yourself. I mean, that's the best way to think about it, right? Is like, well, if I were to get a gift, what kind of gift would I want? That's how you do your best work, right? 100%. Or just buy yourself gifts. You deserve it. <laughs> that's usually uh, my my MO, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I got you this and I got me this. That's Yeah, that sounds about right for nerds. But first, what I like about it. Okay, for what I like about it this week, I'm going to do something a little bit different. What I like about it this week is going to be about charcuterie boards. Oh, these These salty bad boys, a charcuterie board is something you can totally nerd out about. Now, I'm not talking about just like the piece of wood, right? The charcuterie board, yes, you can get into. There are some very nice ones and they've got different grains and textures and woods and oils and all that. I'm sure that's great. What I'm talking about is putting together your charcuterie board for your little dinner party or your board game night or whatever it's going to be. You go and there's just so many choices and you can get to these specialty stores and they've got all the different kinds of cheeses and the different olives and this and that. What I think is the thing that you can nerd out about is when you're setting up your charcuterie board, you want to pick your players. You want to pick things that are balanced and complement each other. This is the same way. It's the same mindset that goes into making your D&D party, right? You got to have... <laughs> You, you gotta balance tank, it. Yep. You want your striker. You want your controller. You need your healer. It's the same thing. You gotta have your salty meats. You gotta have your pickled things. You gotta have your oil uh, infused olives to create this balance, right? And then sometimes, you know, you have to make adjustments as the night goes on. Some things will be more popular than other. You gotta keep yeah. loading up that yeah. board. So yeah. You gotta start making decisions. The other day, we're playing Castle Ravenloft. We only got three players. So do you take the tank, the healer, and the striker? Do you take the controller, the healer, and mm. the you, you, whatever? Like you got to make some decisions. You got to yeah. you got to be in. You got to find that balance. <laughs> you got to make those plays. And also, there's the aesthetic look of it, right? Your charcuterie board's got to look good. If I'm setting up an encounter and I got all my 3D terrain and my dungeon tiles and stuff, I want it to be a set piece that looks good that when i put it down on the table people be like wow that looks really good let's take a picture we're gonna get into this fight same thing with the charcuterie board wow this looks you're not wrong we're gonna get our snack on the charcuterie board and our nerd hobbies they fit right in few things Mm -hmm. i have to say about this one they're amazing this is a great what i like about it i've read some theories that us Gen Xers and maybe even older millennials love charcuterie boards because we grew up on Lunchables. So now we just have adult Lunchables. <laughs> but Did the charcuterie you have Lunchables board when you were a kid? We were allowed once in a while when we could afford uh, them, yes. Yeah, no, I'm n- I have literally never eaten a Lunchable in my life. Really? You're not missing out. I mean, <laughs> it's processed on processed on processed. But sure. when we could afford them, it was a nice little treat. But the other thing is some of my favorite memes or Reddits out there are mm-hmm. ones of collections of people who know what they mean they're saying, but either don't know how to spell the thing or they oh, phonetically sure. haven't seen it. Right. And it's just kind of funny. My favorite one is the shark coochie board. Two words, shark coochie. 
I joke with my partner, Sarah, all the time about that when we were first early dating and it was pandemic. So I would go to work and she would work from home or whatever. And I'd come home and there'd just be this spread. And I joke all the time that that's how she got me right with the shark coochie board. The third thing about it is you actually have an example of how to take this to like 11 with a holiday party that you attended, I think last year, or maybe end of the year party with management staff oh, about yeah. charcuterie boards, but it wasn't all meat and cheese trays. Correct. So everyone was assigned a charcuterie board. So it was how creative can you get with your charcuterie board? Right. So we had some people like, you know what? A sushi boat is a charcuterie board. That's it what is. we're bringing. We had uh, one person who was just absolutely buck wild. It was whiskey and wings and it was the board and it had different flavors of chicken wings and all these little bottles of whiskey like you get from the grab bag yeah, 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 thing yeah. at like BevMo just spread out all over the table. Yes, your charcuterie board, it can be an Italian theme. It can be a Spanish theme. It can be a vegetable. I think if it's a vegetable though, that's a, that's a crudite. That's not a charcuterie. Oh, uh, well, sure, sure, but sure half six of one and half dozen of the other it's it's the same thing so yes that was a really cool uh that was a cool idea and it was fun to see everybody's take on like well one person gets to bring the traditional you know meat and cheese charcuterie board but everybody else has to think out of the box and that was really right, cool, right? yeah thanks for and it's the same that. it's the same idea right you're still thinking about that balance the person who did the wings and whiskey still had to think about what type of wings would complement what types of whiskey right and any of those that you could come up with i love the idea how about some nerd mail? Nerd mail. I got some feedback about an episode we did earlier this season. I think it was nerd watching the aughts when we were talking about movies and I yes. was, ta or it could have been something else, but we were talking about the new Star Trek movies with the Chris, Chris Pine, the Chris, is that Chris Pine? Who's in the Star Trek movies? Chris Pine. Chris, there's so many Chris's. The Chris Pine <laughs> Star Trek movie and how like Leonard Nimoy was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. warned in there is yeah. alternate universe Spock and how like that was stupid and like I did like I I was a throwaway comment to me. <laughs> but apparently it was not. People were upset about the fact that I would besmirch <laughs> the late great Leonard Nimoy by saying that it was a poor choice to put him back in Star Trek. And, and it's like, okay. And they compared it to like, well, Han Solo was in Star Wars when they brought that. Of course Han Solo was in Star Wars. That's the same story. He's playing it's the same comparable. character. Doing it's the not comparable. It's not different thing. universe Star it's Wars. Not like, yeah, it's not like he was in Solo. It's not like in Solo they had the kid running around as Han Solo and then like, oh, here's alternate universe Harrison Ford. Right. All old ass Solo in the... No! Come on! It's not the same at all. <laughs> You knew you said in the episode you're gonna we were gonna get some hate mail about it and you were right. <laughs> um, big, big big rippers to uh, Leonard Nimoy, but come on, it's not the same <laughs> thing. They didn't need to show him in there. I'm doubling down is what I'm doing. I took the well, feedback from the listeners and I'm doubling down. This is a case where I'm gonna say I agree with you. If they wanted Leonard Nimoy to be in that movie, they could have done it a hundred different ways with him in a cameo without calling him Spock and without hanging their hat that he's yeah. They 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 could have just had something else happen where he's making a cameo in that movie. And it would have been much better. I agree. Did with you. you hear from any of our stupid listeners with their stupid ideas? <laughs> well, we did have a look. I'm not going to say they're stupid listeners. We got called out because we were late on an episode. So we went three weeks between two episodes. And we'll talk about why at the end of the episode on the nerdiest things we did this week. But uh, sorry, listeners, we're, we're not we're not the show's not over. We just uh, fell a little behind and it's Rob's fault. So we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Okay. Okay. JK, JK. Um, huh. I also, you know, a listener sent uh sent us something very funny, and it was just, you know, a meme, a picture of a box of nerds candy. And we'll put this on our Patreon so our subscribers can see it, but it's basically a box of nerds, and it was like Dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons theme, D D nerds, but it was also rainbow nerds. So the box said nerd rainbow dungeons and dragons and the meme next to it said something like this also describes the overwhelming majority of my friends and i thought it was freaking hilarious so thank you to the listener for sharing that i'm with glad us. that hit you just the right way <laughs> it still makes me laugh i look at it almost every day since we got it it's so funny also might need to be a box of candy that i need to go get would you use your house full of candy never mind that'd be bad timing <laughs> 
Uh, because we well, just had Halloween. We just but had when Halloween. This comes Halloween, out, yeah. it's going to be like December. So it's going to be like never mind. It's going to be the end of November. So a month later, I am out of candy. But mm. um, we had a lot of trick or treaters. This is my first first oh, yeah. Halloween in Ukiah. So it was twofold. I had to run to. I found a really great barber instead mm. of a hair salon to do my hair here to cut my hair and just keep it like clean. And I made an appointment on Halloween day because I was leaving for a conference to go present on the first. So I'm trying to get downtown. I'm trying to leave school early enough to avoid the after school traffic and there's construction everywhere and so but I didn't make I didn't make it out on time. I'm stuck in traffic and I get to downtown Ukiah and it is packed with trick or treaters. They have oh, the a main whole, street. Like, yes. Yeah. They have a whole festival and all the businesses people sit outside and give kids candy. I mean it was packed. It was cool to see. I hadn't seen anything really like cool. that right. in a very long time. Once I was able to get there, I asked the guy cutting my hair. I was like, does this mean I'm not going to get rid of all that candy from Costco that we bought? And he goes, "Oh no, they'll go to the neighborhoods next and they tend to go to multiple neighborhoods." And sure enough, like we were out there for a few hours. We ran wow. out of three Costco-sized bags of candy. Plus a Costco bin of the like cheese balls and a Costco box of, they had little Halloween individually packaged cheese balls and they had little Halloween individually packaged little, um, like gummy bears, but they were like spooky figures, a whole box of those, whole like plastic container of the cheese balls and then three bags of candy gone. And you, you stocked up. We got warned that it, okay. it was pretty popular. So worst case scenario is I was just going to take that stuff to school and give it out. You know, I have like a little candy dish on the conference table in my office. So I have a candy dish there. So it wasn't going to go to waste. But yeah, we stocked up because people said it's pretty big here. So that was kind of cool. Did you have a lot of trick-or-treaters? No, it's so strange. We had... We never get a, a lot of trick or treaters because we're like on the corner and our front door is offset from the street and stuff. Right. And so we almost never do. I think either last year or two years ago, whenever everybody was kind of coming back up after the Thanksgiving or the Halloween that we didn't have because of COVID and like nobody oh, right, went right, out right. the next year. Oh my gosh. We got, I mean, not a ton, but we probably got between 20 and 30, which was unheard oh, wow. of for us because usually yeah. we'll get a handful, like five. Right. So it's usually like, Oh, I'll go buy a little variety pack at the grocery store. You know, one of these things that's little small, ones, yeah. And it's fine. I end up eating half of it. That year, whether that was last year or two years ago, kids kept coming. I had to run to the grocery store and get a bunch more candy. <laughs> like, oh, no. oh, hold on. I was giving away candy from, I don't know, like the cupboards and stuff. So this year I was like, well, I better get two just in case it's busy again. And yeah, it was totally like we got like four people. So now back to normal. Yeah. Full of chocolate that I'm <laughs> giving myself headaches with because I eat too much. Oh, sugar. no. Just take it and put a little candy dish in your office. It'll go fast. I did. I did put a candy. I used half of one of those bags was at the help desk at the office. And then I put another one in the back room. And there's still, you know, another half bag here that Andrew's eating that he probably shouldn't be. (laughs) Well, on to our episode. We're talking about getting gifts for the nerds in your life. And just like we did this episode last season, we kind of went by categories. So let's just go through those categories. Are are these the same categories as they were? They are the Every same categories as last and year. It's on us to come up with something new and remember if we had something. This is great. It's going to go great. I think both of our lists are better than last season, but certainly okay. one thing we didn't have time to do was meet and decide whether or not we wanted to keep the same categories. So here we are. Same categories. All right. It- <laughs> So, some nerd best friends listener nerd is going to be like Rob says the same thing for the D and D nerd every year. Well, when do we get uh, maybe we'll find out. I don't we, know. We'll find I mean, out I when we get do that there. on purpose. I'm just saying. Well, let's start with the comics nerd. For me, the comics nerd, I'm at the point where maybe I've slowed down a lot on purchasing comics, mm-hmm. and I just don't know what to do with them. So, mm-hmm. I think the comics nerd in your life could maybe use good storage solutions besides those like cruddy cardboard white foldable boxes oh, yeah. that everyone uses. They're like I always find mine because they they're not all the way full so they'll lean forward and the last few get bent and stuff like that so it's yep. just not a good solution but i did see on etsy as i was looking for storage solutions for my space and my nerd room i found some great custom boxes on etsy there's one cool like wooden box with a pull out oh that key that has a little spring loaded thing like you see at stores so like it there holds them nice go. and tight yeah. uh, i saw a really cool kind of thick clear mountable holders where you could put multiple comics in it but you could be displaying one at the front and just make like oh, that's a cool. little display and i saw another one uh, a book almost like you would with like an old photo album 
mm-hmm. but it had the backing and the mm-hmm. cover for comic books. So you can flip through the comic book and pull out the one you want to use. So there's some the really cover. great ideas on Etsy for storage. Oh, so the cool. comic books nerd in your life listener could probably use some sort of custom storage like that. What and you've got hard oh. plastic ones that he uses too that we get on Amazon but they're they'll fold when you kind of unlock them they'll fold up flat but they're like black hard plastic and when yeah. you unfold them they've got like a little bit of slots on the edge so you can put like a plastic divider in it to keep them from mm. slipping oh, down oh like got it yeah, about. Yeah. but yeah still I mean the the big white cardboard long boxes are a classic of right. the last hundred years of comic booking but <laughs> they're not great especially for long term no. they start breaking down and it makes it hard to actually kind of look through your collection because they're weird to store. So a nice like I really liked that wooden box with the clear mm-hmm. front so I can see what's in front and the spring load I could sit that on a shelf in my nerd room and it wouldn't like this it wouldn't look like this big junky cardboard box. Speaking of shelving, yeah, you just redid your board game shelf. I've been seeing pictures <laughs> of it coming online. Like, freaking great. It's got LEDs. It's, it's all full of games. Yeah. Well, part of the re- redo is part of my nerdy thing I did this week. But there's a reason why I had to redo the shelves. But the, yeah, the LED lights got finalized. And so I like have them different colors they're on two different remotes so everything looks good but i either now need more calyx boxes or i need to figure out what to do because i'm in trouble yeah um, that was just a yeah. reminder yeah. to uh to be sure that you're on nerd best friends on instagram so you can see cool ideas of the storage and the way those calyx shelves turned out yours are looking yeah. great thank you yeah the calyx box is a good tip from uh, the online board boarding communities in facebook yeah, I don't remember the names of the groups. I just started joining them and watching what other people talk about. Yeah, no, I mean they're super, they're super popular. You see people using them for board games a lot, but yours is yours is right up there with the leaders, man. You really <laughs> knocked it out. Uh, uh, what do you books. have for comic books? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna recommend a comic book that's been out for a long time. This is a French graphic novel. It's called Black Sad, and this comic book it's like a noir detective book, but the characters are anthropomorphic animals. I, oh. I should have done more research about the uh, author and the year that it came out and those kinds of things, but I didn't. You will be able to find it. I was reminded about it because Andrew said that he was reading it and he was just so impressed by the different storytelling, which of course, because it's not like an American superhero right. book, that it's got some interesting interesting plot hooks and interesting character developments. For me, whenever I look through it, it's like the art is just outstanding. And it's one of those things where it's, again, because it's not on that like American comic book grind of it's got to be out by this date and it's got to come out every month and it's got to do this like these artists and this author takes their time black sad comes out when it comes out when they're good and ready to give it to you (laughs) kind of thing and um you can tell just the craftsmanship of the it's a black and white ink drawing comic book and it's just absolutely outstanding the backgrounds are outstanding the characters are emotive even though you know they're animals it's got a mystery. It's got good characters. It's got some intrigue. Black Sad. I think it's a comic book I have not yet recommended on the podcast. So that's wow. going to be my Christmas recommendation. Check out a good, you know, collection, collector's edition of Black Sad. Right on. It started to sound familiar, but then you kept going. And no, it's not one you've mentioned before. Mm-hmm. I don't think um, so. And it's still coming out new now. It's still current. It's not an older comic. I believe they are still, again, I didn't really do my research on it. I was just like, oh, Black Sad is what I have a seat. In 2000 from Juan Diaz Canales and Juanjo, man, it's great. Probably would have been Wonderful better if I had French hadn't. names. I like how you said Canales and it's probably Canales. more. Juan Diaz Canales. Juan Diaz Canales and Juan... <laughs> Juanjo Guarnindo. It, it wasn't <laughs> worth it. I shouldn't have looked it up. What about it being current? They did release something in 2022. So almost a okay. year ago. Black Sad, okay. They All Fall Down, part one. Oh, well, it says part one, which means there's apt to be more. Probably another one coming out this year. Our next category is talking about the movie nerds. And I do think we mentioned this last year. Just one of the cool things that's out there are these posters you can put on your wall to scratch off mm-hmm. like movies that you've watched. And there's like, there's one that's. Uh, yeah, you know, 100 top 100 movies, API. Yeah. yeah. I saw one come by my timeline, of, you know, the greatest horror film, scratch this off. I really think these are cool. It's a really great way to gamify for your movie nerd. They'll get it. They'll put that poster up and immediately be able to scratch off like half of them, but then they'll have a reminder of ones that they can look up and watch. I think that's a really cool thing for your movie nerd. Now, if your movie nerd is someone high up on your priority list, like your partner or a best friend, and you're really, you're going to spend a little coin on them. I think a good 
good sound bar or something mm-hmm. to help out their setup. If you know what their setup looks like, a good sound bar, or even if it is your partner, a good wireless headset so that they can watch movies on their own and not disturb the rest of the house. Mm-hmm. I know those of us who have Apple TVs, we can do that with our AirPods. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. everybody has that setup. So if it's someone, like I said, someone you're close to uh, and is important, high up priority on your list, see what setup they have and try to surprise them with something to help the sound quality for your movie nerd, because that's like one of the most important things, even more important than a bigger screen is what that movie sounds like. A good pair of Bluetooth headphones for watching movies is a must have for any parent. If you are looking for a (laughs) gift for a new parent, (laughs) those kids go to sleep like they don't want to be woken up by your big, loud action movie. The headphones are a must. You got to keep those kids asleep. You got to use that precious little time. Oh, my gosh. The kids finally got to bed on time. It's 830. I've got two hours before I myself have to go to bed. I'm going to knock out this movie I've been meaning to see. Got to have a good pair of earphones in order to watch watch that movie when uh, when the youngins go to sleep without waking them up. Must and I'll have. say that that's not even a youngins thing. When my stepdaughter was with us before she graduated high school and she decided to move in with us, having my Bluetooth, having my AirPods connect to the Apple TV when I'm up at 630 in the morning and like watching something or listening to a podcast, I can run that all through the Apple TV. Mm-hmm. That was when I would be able to sneak episodes of stuff because everyone else was sleeping. That's a valuable as a parent, regardless of what age the kids are. I agree. For me, it's December. If you it's December 2023, if you're going out to the movie, stop it. That's struck work. You're a terrible person. Don't support hey, the hey. movie industry right now. Uh, but, good point. Yeah. <laughs> there are many different ways that you can enjoy movies, especially some of the older movies. And so what I wanted to shine a light on are some of the creative movie experiences that you can go see. I know that you participated by going to like the Hollywood Bowl, I think, right? And seeing Back oh, to the Future. Oh, Back to the Future. Yes, with it was the amazing. Live orchestra, amazing. just absolutely cool. I had tickets to do the same thing with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, the first Spider-Man yeah. one with the live orchestra. Andrew had a performance. I had to sell those tickets. Oh, I can't go. No, you didn't tell I me know. about that. I did. I would have bought those. I would have bought those tickets. Down at it's down in LA. You would have gone. All I would. I would have bought those tickets. Oh, you're right. I probably could see one more locally to me now. But wow, that's too bad. <laughs> but I. But some of those things. Um. Uh, another friend of mine went and saw Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. I think also at the mm-hmm. Hollywood Bowl. Mm-hmm. And John Williams was there conducting and just yes, absolutely incredible. So there are some really cool movie experiences you can have without just the same old go to the movies. And then other things that are not something that we do every day, or at least not around here, is the drive through. Like oh yeah. Yeah, we drive to yeah yeah right. the, sorry, not drive through <laughs> that's where that's where you get your French fries. We do that all the time. We get our in and out. Okay, <laughs> that's right. I do the drive through all the time. <laughs> too too often. The drive in <laughs> hadn't been in like decades, but my wife's work was putting on an event, and it was like. Hey, we rented out the drive-in and everybody come and people have these amazing setups that they're doing, especially like with their pickup trucks parked backwards and their mattresses in the back or their seats up on the thing. And like the real, like a huge tailgating experience. I didn't realize like we were like, oh, well, we'll get there early because we want to get, you know, we want to have a good place to sit. But no, everybody got there early. It was like tailgating before the football game. Everybody had stuff out there. They were walking around. They were trading. Like it was a super cool experience. And then, um, you know, the sun went down and the bugs came out and everybody got in their car and watched the movie <laughs> watch or watched like half the movie. And there's like lots of people leaving at the end. They're like, ah, we're just here for the, <laughs> we're here for the tailgating. We're out of here. So very cool. And then the other thing that uh, around here that started with when they were starting to reopen after COVID was can't fill the theater. So you could rent out the theater. Oh, so yeah. it's kind of a yeah, flat yeah. rate of like, oh yeah, for 350 bucks, the theater's yours to watch whatever, you know, whatever movie you want, right. usually an old movie and put as many people in here you want or don't. Right. And it's all yours. I have not done that experience yet but i think that that would be really fun to do especially if you have a group of friends that are really into a movie or quote a movie all the time or something like that and just take the 10 or 12 of you and rent out the whole theater to yourself you know and it wouldn't be that big of a buy-in for everybody individually or it's not really that big of a deal for a gift for a christmas gift for that special person 
What I like about the the last two that you mentioned is that you're still supporting your local economy, right? You know, the movie theaters and drive-ins. Drive-ins are harder to come by now just because it, it was not a popular thing. Like when we were growing up in the 80s and there'd be double features, right? And the first movie might be a kid's movie and the second movie more towards adults because the kids would be passed out in the back of the car and the adults would then watch another movie. I remember doing that a lot with our like Volkswagen van and my dad would open the back and we'd just all be sitting there with our legs kicking off the back of the of the Volkswagen watching a movie. And it was cheap because they would charge per car instead of per person. And when you're right. got a big Mexican family, that per car is much more affordable. So, yeah, I like the idea of giving your movie nerd an experience to go along with their movie going. Cool. The next one is craft beer nerd. Now, I know this is your favorite favorite category. Uh, you know, it's harder and hard. It's more and more difficult for me to c- c- to think of things that I haven't recommended. So I'm interested in what you uh, in what you found. I saw something really cool that I even considered gifting myself. Sharper Image has this really cool single can dispenser that looks like a tap in a bar. So it's just for a single can. You put one, I think it could be a tall boy, but what it does is pour it in a manner similar to a brewery. So the pour just physically chemistry comes out a little bit different than it would if you just poured from the can to the, to your cup. And for someone like me, when I do drink, I, I don't drink a lot anymore. I might have a beer, maybe two, not having to get a kegerator, a mini kegerator and buy that bigger amount of alcohol that's likely going to go to waste for me. I can open a can or two and watch this pour. I can send you a link if you want to see. I'll put I a link up on our, <laughs> I'm going to put a link up on our, our newsletter for this episode. So our Patreon subscribers can see it as well, but it's got the a lot of beer draft system. Is this what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah. It just looks like a long cylinder. Okay. And this No, this is nicer than I was expecting it to be. This looks kind of cool. All right. So it's got what, a lot of good reviews saying like it tastes closer to a tap beer from the can than if you just pour from the can. It's a chemistry thing, I'm sure. It doesn't quite show the how, but it looks like no. there's a little, I don't want to say the word straw, but there's a little like thing Adds that you put in the microfoam. Can. Enhances flavor. Oh, there's ultrasonic vibrations. There you go. It's swank, but it looks really cool. Huh. A can at a time. I have never seen... It requires two AA batteries. I have never seen this before. <laughs> it is incredible. Yeah. I saw it the other huh. day. Like I said, I almost gifted it to myself, but... Huh. It's even got like a little drain to catch your spills when your head overflows like you do at the yes. top. Interesting. What a find. Like right now, I am enjoying a fight on pale ale that you and Maria got me. I imagine mm-hmm. it would taste a bit fresher brewed if I ran it through that system. It's Maybe just so. really interesting. There's only one way to find out. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> uh, what, what do you cool have? Find. You know, I don't, it was, it was rough. I feel like last year I talked about getting memberships to your local brew like your mug club yeah, uh, yeah, yeah at your local brewery or that place that, that people like to hang out so i'm gonna go beyond that even and talk about local home brewers club so oh. in your city unbeknownst to you there is probably a local brewers club with like official memberships and they pay dues and they do meetups and they do bottle exchanges and they have probably a facebook page where they talk about their different recipes and all that kind of stuff so even if you are the most like novice new beer maker you want to get hooked up with one of these groups even to have like the like i have a local brew membership to a local brewery down south of us in like the Thousand Oaks Conejo area oh. because we have a friend who is a, an amazing brewer like an award winning craft home brewer who's in this club and he's like you got to join this club I'm like but I don't make beer he's like it doesn't matter you get invited to all the events you get to try beers like all this kind of stuff like we want the memberships we want the dues like it's always very small it's a pretty niche it's a chemistry hobby really yeah and especially if you live near or around a a, a well populated city it's incredible the different kinds of things they do sometimes they'll take trips or they'll take a group to a beer festival that's coming to town for like you know they'll get discounted rates because they're the local home brewers association and those kinds of things and then they always have like their parties or their barbecues where everybody's bringing their home brew and you can try it and you can rate it and all this kind of stuff and it gives them feedback and it's a cool excuse to like get together and and share and share their stuff if that is something if you have anybody with a connection or 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 you yourself even if you're just you got your beer buddy in your closet like join find the local home brewers club and join it and check out like
like the benefits there. So thinking about the gift, that would be a great gift for that amateur person in your life is to like look around and be like, hey, I wonder if they have taken the leap to go join this group. If not, just do it. You, They won't regret it if you get yeah. them into one of these into one of these groups. That's a great idea. And just supporting more than the even small breweries are big breweries to someone who's making yeah. a I don't even know what the smallest denomination you can make of beer, but I can imagine it's very small. Like so a gallon. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Wow. That's a really good idea. Well, we're on the gadget nerd now. What did you put for the gadget nerd? For the gadget nerd, I've been looking at this thing. So I have a 15 year old boy in the house. And no matter what I do, this this young man will not get up on time for school or be able to set an alarm, even if the alarm is, you know, a smart alarm where it's like, hey, Amazon Echo device, wake me up tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Like something will happen and it won't <laughs> or <laughs> something will happen and he'll reach over and unplug it. I don't know what the deal yep, is. But yep, yep. so we were looking at alarm clocks and different things. Like, do we just get the old, like the classic alarm clock with the two bells? on the top and put it across the room and I'll yes. just set it every night like we were going to but I did see something that I thought was absolutely amazing and these are sunrise alarm clocks okay. and so it's just like it's an alarm clock like it's, it almost looks like a glass oval or a glass ball and it'll display the time if you want but what it does is it uses little LED lights inside to mimic the sunrise and sunset that's happening outside in your area. I don't know about you, but I have this weird thing where if I wake up in the morning and it's dark, I'm kind of tired or whatever. If I wake up in the morning and like it's light, but it's like cloudy and overcast, whatever, that's an okay morning. If I wake up and the sun is out and the sky is blue or like the sunrise is coming on a clear day, like I feel like the day is just better. Like I get off to a better start to my day. It's some sort of psychological thing that I've got where like, oh, today's going to be a great day. I got plenty of sleep because look, it's daytime outside now or something like that. And so this alarm clock will just sit there dark all night. And then as the sun is coming up outside, it will start glowing with like, starting with that kind of blue purple light filling your room and then change to like brighter and brighter and brighter so that it's making the inside of your room with the light mimic what the sun should be doing outside. Or you can send it be like, look, I get up at 4.30 in the morning. The sun's not up, but I want to simulate a sunrise starting at 4.30 in the morning and it'll start doing that. And then I think it goes throughout the whole day too. And at bedtime, it'll start like turning dark and go back to sleep. So it's... It's like combating, what do they call it? Like your seasonal depression (laughs) by simulating light in your room. And I think that looks really cool. Wait, so that is so cool. I actually have a friend who maybe didn't talk about alarm clock, but uses something for sunlight simulation. Maybe it is an alarm clock. I'll have to ask her. Maybe. I mean, I know people who live like in the, like, Alaska or the Netherlands or whatever they'll have or the Midwest UV lights <laughs> maybe so yes but I just I thought this was so cool like such a cool idea because I know that feeling of like oh man the sun's out it's gonna be a great day and I wonder if I could trick myself into doing it you'll have to tell me if you get it for Andrew and see if it works we didn't he was not into it he's like no I just want this one and of course we got it and he still can't get up on time so yep no, he, he may not have a choice next time <laughs> <laughs> how funny Looking at things for gadget nerds, I'm so surprised that drones are still a thing. Like, I get people who make films or television or they make promotional videos for stuff. I get those people having drones. But, like, why are drones still a thing for people? I can imagine kids get excited about them. They play with them twice and then that's it. You know, I have a coworker who is a drone enthusiast. He's a drone hobbyist. It's awesome. He he gets just the most amazing things. It has... Like, you know, he'll show us his drone footage and it's such an additive to any event, right? Like we do the, like the fiestas parade and he'll bring his drone and just get these amazing shots of everybody, like the beach and people, you know, the parade and all this stuff. He just recently came back to from vacation where he had visited his old hometown in Mexico. And this town, you know, does their town celebration where they celebrate the patron saint of the town and they have a big festival and parade down the street with dancers and all kinds of stuff. He brought his drone and the 
drone sailing over this town in Mexico and picking up the cathedrals and seeing the parade and all the colors and the mountains that the town is up against. Just beautiful. And you can tell like he's getting better and better as far as like, it's all about, it's not about, I mean, for some people, but for, for this hobby, it's all about being smooth and yeah, getting oh, those yeah. camera angles yeah. just perfectly right. That's led to more hobbies for him where now he's doing video compilations and like video editing and he'll take the shots that he's getting from his camera on the ground of like the parade and the things and the beautiful aerial shots that he's getting from this drone that's got like a 4k camera in it it's like ridiculous and putting things together so he's got like the flying hobby he's got the cinematography he's got video editing and it's it's amazing every time he'll show up and be like oh hey i've been working on this and we all gather around his computer we'll watch it and we're like, oh my God, Julio, this is absolutely incredible what you're doing here. So I get it. It's, it is a cool hobby that kind of leads and has other hobbies to get into surrounding it. Well, like the, the hobby itself isn't about being a gadget nerd though. The hobby itself is that cinematography that like, what is he doing with that footage? He's making videos for himself. Is he trying to like get more subscribers on YouTube to make a few no, bucks? Like- I think it's just the same kind of thing that I do. Like, who am I painting this miniature for? It's like, I'm painting it for the people I play with and stuff. Right. So like like when he sends that video out to his family from his hometown they're going to be like amazed right and he put sure. some work into he created something beautiful for his friends and family to do just like a lot of the stuff we do with our hobby i mean i guess i question that the same way i question people who go to concerts and record on their phone they just have their phone up instead of experiencing the moment i question whether or not people go home and rewatch their videos more than once or twice right like mm. It's, but I mean, I get, I'm just surprised the drones are still popular. So if you have a gadget nerd in your life, maybe just a, you know, entry level drone for them to see if it's other hobbies will come out of it. Maybe I'm just surprised that it's still there, but I wonder if it's not for the gadget nerd. I wonder if it's the next gadget for your photography yeah, video yeah. nerd cinematographer. Like for sure. I, for like a Andrew. while when we were, yes, Andrew I think Andrew would figure out stuff, what to do. Right? With so it, that yeah. would be a next step for him would be yeah. like, Oh, you could get these aerial shots to put in your right. videos as well. Speaking of nerd that travels, I think these compact folding foldable systems they have now that you can charge your phone your airpods your watch all at once they've become relatively inexpensive instead of carrying a bunch of different wires and plugs for each device you have one wire and one plug that'll charge three things regardless of what system you use if you're your android or your apple they have these systems for both because most things come with the ability to charge not being plugged in what's the word i'm talking about wireless charging yeah, just dock charge, whatever. Mm-hmm. Most devices come with that now, so you, these can be used for multiple things. My car has one, by the way. Oh, it has a little charging pad? Uh-huh. Awesome. You know, it's, it's funny. Crazy. We thought Maria's car did because it was in the, like, it was in the user manual. I'm like, right. no, this isn't one. And so she actually asked about it. She's like, it says my model has this. And they say, oh, they pulled it for the last, the, at the last minute. They were getting hot and melting. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> So I haven't used, I've used it once or twice because I have a case. I have one of those cases that closes. It's got a close and it's got your, like my, my bank card and my ID in it card slots. So it's too thick to be used. So it's got a little power button turned off. But I like when I first got the car, I, op- I took it out of the, took my phone out and I'm like, oh yeah, it totally works. But it's got power C plugs now instead of yeah. USB plugs. So, but yeah, I think these foldable systems that can go nice and neat in a travel case is something good for your gadget nerd who also travel. You know, I have one of these things next to my bed. It's just this one unit that my phone leans on, my watch clips on, my mm-hmm. headphones sit on and mm-hmm. it charges them all at the same time. And honestly, I've never even thought to just grab that and take it with me on. <laughs> Would make so much more sense, right? Wrapping up all these cords <laughs> yep. and stuffing them into the backpack. Yep. Uh, Do I have duh, this cable? Grab okay, this this thing. Is, is it compact enough that you can throw it in your suitcase? It's pretty small. It doesn't fold or anything like that. Yeah. It's like a set thing. But... but imagine that, but that unfolds, Yeah, right? It's not yeah. as fancy. It's not going to dock and sit up so you can see your your face, but your sure, sure, own sure. face. But I saw one that basically looks like a little square and it just opens up and it's just three of those round chargers so you put the phone on one you put your airpods on one put your watch on one yeah it's good stuff so we have the home the home nerd for the nerd who likes to stay home <laughs> or improve and work on the home uh, you mean <laughs> they like to stay home i like to stay home <laughs> i like to stay home i'm not knocking on anybody here are you familiar with the company garrett wade not at all okay 
look up Garrett Wade when you get a okay. chance. They're the home nerdy catalog company. I have gotten so many gifts for the home nerd <laughs> from this website. Rose gold pruning shears, I think, Ooh. were the last things that I <laughs> that I got from there. Gardening, you know, little gardening sets of fancy, very sharp trowels and rakes and things like that. Got a avocado picker stick oh a little like a um, there you know it's got it's like the oh, big, the big thing with the trigger on it but it's got a basket on the top to oh, kind of catch man, those avocados. things are so crazy have you tried to use one yeah no we had to try to like build it and get it set up and stuff and it was nuts do you have avocado trees my mother-in-law does okay those things uh my sister has oh, yeah. a whole grove of them right but they have like a fiberglass one that's all falling apart so you got to use these big thick gloves otherwise you mm-hmm. get fiberglass all in your hands but man picking avocados is no joke hats off to the farming industry that does that for a living because that little catch basket gets heavy so fast oh it's- yeah Holding yeah, it no, up you're... above your shoulders the whole time? Yeah. No, good it's stuff. almost impossible. So yeah, t- n- and not just gardening tools, but kitchen tools as well. They make cool knives, uh, barbecue utensils and stuff. If you are not familiar yet with the Garrett Wade company, I would say check that out and realize, oh, I could get this for that person. Oh, I could get this for that person. Oh, this person would love one of these. And it's cool stuff. Wow. That's a great tip. I wrote S- down Garrett Wade. So I remind myself. Uh, yeah. You might be surprised. Like it's just, it's probably not, I don't know. If it's like anything super special, but it sure is pretty. Yeah, <laughs> like everything right. they have is like, it like looks like a gift. It's very pretty. It makes you look like an adult when people are at there your you house. Go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, how about um, you home nerd? Talking about hooking up the calyx shelves. We've also uh-huh. used LED lights in a few spaces in the home just to make it look, I don't know. It just looks really cool and warm and inviting. And also when you put it behind your television, it's supposed to be better for your eyes. So putting like a red light behind it is supposed to be easier in your eyes when you're watching, when you're watching TV. But I have uh, LEDs behind my TV right now, but I just did it because it looks cool. It does also look cool. <laughs> um, and I mean, there's some really fancy ones out there for around your TV that have like a, a sound intake. Yes, so it'll mine react. Do. do they? Do you like the they way do, it reacts? Yeah, but it's too sensitive. So it's just constantly flashing. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I need a better yeah. one. Well, I'm so I put LED lights for your home nerd. And in particular, the Philips Hue system is mm-hmm. one where you buy the Hue thing and it connects to your like Alexa or whatever. Other pieces that you buy for this Hue system will automatically connect to this hub. So you don't have a hundred different remotes for the different parts of your house. But your home nerd could use some LED lighting. So get some that are multicolored so they can decide the color. And mm-hmm. just the longer the strands, the better. Because you can actually cut them. They'll just end where you cut. You can't like reuse the rest of it and stuff so buying a few strands of those that all have one system that can can connect to alexa google or siri perfect for your home nerd to like jazz up their living spaces teenagers love it now too (laughs) i don't know i put i helped andrew put some up in his room and he was like oh this is super cool for like two weeks and now I never see him turn them on. Or he lost the remote in the mess that is his room. That is, is don't, also don't underestimate that yeah. potential. But I've seen kids' rooms where like the LED lighting is under their bed frame. So it just kind of illuminates. Oh, cool. And yeah. like instead of night lights, they're using that illumination. I mean, there's a lot of that's really cool kind of what why the ones behind my TV are always on because it's like you can yeah. walk in the room and not stub your toe on something yes, because there's yes, a little yes, bit yes, of light. Yes. I also I could use some more. I want to put some behind the cabinetry that I have in mm-hmm. the nerd room. Yeah. I actually I really just need to look into it because what I want to do is how you have those extenders that are yes. cord and not light because I need not lights to go over the door right Right. because it's a row of cabinets and then a door frame and then another row of cabinets that's not just a strip of leds going right well the philip hue might be the the right system for you to look into because you can buy separate strips and they're all connect i don't know how i didn't look into it that much but or as a follower on our instagram page recommended it so i looked into it and it's a pretty pricey system so i didn't go with it i actually have two remotes for my calyx box Mm. It did look like a really good system where you buy that one thing and then it keep connecting to it. I would love, we would love a recommendation. If you are listening yeah. to this and you're like, oh no, I got the perfect one with the LED strips and you can connect them and this send it in we'd love to see it yeah and you know the led lights are better for like under cabinet work in your kitchen and stuff they're gonna last Mm. longer you don't have to worry about bulb replacement you like i mean they're really great solutions for making homes look really really neat now without expensive electrician sorry electricians you have a very valid work and we will still hire you to do stuff (laughs) but in this case if i can just do a strip of lighting that's gonna last me a you know hundred thousand hours or whatever led lights are supposed to last i'm gonna do it 100 percent. that's great 
Speaking of home, yeah. how about your cook? How about your cooking nerd? Oh, very cool. Is my turn again. Okay. So I put on this kind of kitchen gadget that we have that we use for everything. I think it's a nine in one device. <laughs> it's okay. Nice. It does everything and it does everything pretty well the one i have is by the company is the instant omni plus nine in one and it looks like a toaster oven and it sits there on the shelf and ours does gosh it's a toaster oven it's an air fryer it's a convection oven Mm -hmm. it's a sourdough bread starter Oh, it's a dehydrator. It's, it, there's a million different it's, it's, things. Yours has rotisserie, right? You can do rotisserie yes, in it? Yes, there's a rotisserie yeah. in it. It does everything. And we use it so, so much. We've had it for a couple of years now. Hardly ever use the microwave. Or if we do, it's just kind of a means to an end of like, oh, here's something cold or frozen. I'm going to throw it in the microwave for a minute yeah. and then move it over to the all-in-one to do the reheat setting or to toast it or to air fry it or something like that. It saves on the oven as well because it's just another little convection oven. Yeah. Like yeah. You don't have to heat up the whole kitchen with the big regular oven if you're only right. making a handful of pizza bagels or whatever you got yeah, yeah, going yeah, yeah. on. Didn't really think like, well, do we really need like another thing taking up counter space in the gadget th- or in the kitchen? And it's like this one. Yeah, totally awesome. We have the Ninja one mm-hmm. that's skinnier. It's maybe like half the size of yours long wise and it folds up. Like it sits up um, on its hinges and it comes uh-huh. down when you want to use it. So same thing. I don't think it's a nine in one though. But yeah, if I'm just warming up because Sarah doesn't eat meat often, I'm just warming up something for myself as like mm-hmm. a lunch on a weekend or something. I can bring that ninja down and warm up like uh, I'll say hot pocket. But I don't eat hot pockets anymore, but like mm-hmm. single hot pocket for me in that thing on air fryer. Like so many things on air fryer status are so much better oh, yeah. than turning I mean, on the, the regular oven. It's yeah, amazing. We always go we, because we have this thing. We'll always choose the air fry option, yeah. whatever frozen thing we, we pop out. And it is it's way better and so and way quicker. And yeah. yes. So if you're if you're thinking about this one or you're looking around at your at your friend's kitchen and it's like they've got a toaster and a microwave and an air fryer and a this and it's just all this clutter. We can reduce this, <laughs> you know, going back to the what I like about it. This episode was charcuterie boards. Yeah. Uh, one of the coolest gifts. I think we both got one last year, a really cool personalized charcuterie board. I got one last year from my brother and sister-in-law of big USC emblem that was etched in the back of it. I think you got one that talked about it's like a uh, Casa rolling de dice Cooper, or something. Roll yeah. dice thing um, yeah. that my brother-in-law used his uh, laser cutter to do yes. it himself. Maybe yeah. his design and did it. Super cool. Uh, I think my my brother's dad had a laser cutter as well, and so they made one for everyone in the family. Mine was a big USC emblem, which I've done charcuterie boards for like football season and stuff this year and it's just it's really cool and like learning how to use the oils to keep it seasoned and Mm. and all of that stuff was really cool but yeah there are so many personalized boards just in my research for this episode there's one that looked really cool it's just a square and it's got the i forget the name of the the stuff you pour in the middle of it but it looked like a little river going through it resin yeah resin yeah there you go like a little resin river between two sides of the charcuterie board and i imagine like the really cool things you can do with that like your your cooking nerd can use a really nice charcuterie board that's personalized for them whether it's like rob's that says casa de cooper or Mm -hmm. like me that's usc because that's where i graduated from like a really cool personalized one is the mix of the like i know who you are and this is something personalized and also i know you like to do things in the kitchen because they don't have to use it as charcuterie board these really are cutting boards right right i mean they'll mess up the logo if you start cutting on but (laughs) or you flip it to the other side my usc one has the back side yeah very good so your cookie nerd could use something personalized like that for their kitchen All right. We are miniature nerds. We are miniature painting nerds. What do you have for the mini painting nerd on your list? I would, this is a really hard one because even if yeah. you know your paint, your mini painting nerd, like I, Rob, I know you really well. There would be no way for me to get like I had a lucky guess when I got you for your birthday. I got you the speed paint set. The They're on my list. Paint. Yeah, <laughs> they're so good. They're that fun. was luck because they really were cool. new and you hadn't exactly. had them yet. Yes, yes. And I had to even still text Maria and say, Does, <laughs> "Do you know if he ordered these?" And she's like, "I can't, I can't snoop on his Amazon, but I, let me go look." She like looked around. She goes, "I don't see anything that looks like that." So I'm like, "I'm gonna take a gamble." And it really was a gamble. So I think even if you really know your mini painting nerd, this can be really difficult. But what I will say is the board you had me buy for dry brushing, I think it's a really good buy. Opus dry brush board. Yeah. The artist Opus. Use it for the first time today. Ooh. I think even if your mini painting nerd has one, there will always come a time 
when you need to refresh it because the the board is pre-textured and eventually paints will cover up all that texture and it defeats the purpose of using it for dry brushing. So on that same web website, um, Omni Artist Opus, Opus. Artist Opus, thank you. On that website, Artist Opus, they have dry brushes that are really good and the board itself that are really good. And I highly recommend, or did you have me get the brushes from Miniature? I Mark? usually get cheaper brushes, although I don't know. I, I have like an imposter syndrome where I'm like, I'm not a good enough painter to get fancy artists opus brushes but then i'm also think like i paint miniatures every freaking day i should probably yes. get i should probably be okay getting some then yeah you had me buy one of brushes. you had me buy one of their dry brushes for the sole purpose of slap chop just because of the nice. the, the duration of use for slap chop so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's going to be a dry brush that lasts me a really long time so i recommend these to your mini painting nerd on 100%. your guest list because you can't go wrong with it they will right. use it at some point point. and then this is going to be kind of a running joke because it's going to come up our next category but maybe a spill proof mug of some sort so that rob can stop dipping his paintbrush into his beer can into his i don't beer. spill <laughs> i don't spill no, i don't know the, the spill, spill proof will keep be... the brush from going inside your beer cup oh you mean with a lid Yes. I so I because I can't put the brush in there. Yes. I'll find a way somehow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, so good. What, what do you have? I don't know how many times I've sent you a picture. It seems like every Sunday morning it's like, oh, here's a picture of Rob with his paintbrush sticking out of his coffee cup. Coffee cup, sometimes the so beer, beer mug, sometimes it's it is your water cup, but not the water cup for cleaning your brush. <laughs> I've done that too. Like I'll have the water thing there, but it's empty and I'll like put the brush in there and start switching it around. Like, wait a minute. I'm just painting <laughs> the inside of this. Uh, inside of this little... As long as you haven't drank your way. <laughs> You're I've never I, that I have not done. So that is what the, I I put a wet paint a, a painting paintbrush in everything, but I've yet to drink the paint. Take a water. drink of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I maybe picked you... it up a couple times. But... And realized your problem. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Mini paint. Uh, I also, those speed paint metallics are cool. They're just a dip. They're just totally different than anything else. Yeah. So if you yeah. happen to know, if it's a close person that's your mini nerd friends and you're like looking around and seeing if they use like the army painter speed paints and if they have those metallics, if not, they're fun to play with. They're just, they're, they're a fun little paint to use. They're kind of translucent like speed paints, but they're also very metallic. And what I like about them is they have so many different hues into it like the like there's four or five different shades of gold in there which is really cool because usually when i was just using traditional metallics it's like i've got a really yellowy shiny gold and i've got a really metallic kind of darker brown gold and that was it and now i've got like this greenish hue and uh, a couple different layers of like shiny ones some that look a little bit more like worn brass like they're really fun to use but the other thing was and i think we probably shared some of this on instagram and i know there was a couple weeks where this got really popular was they're these little fidget toys and it's like you push your, your fingertip into them. And they're like these little bubbles that like. Yeah, it's like an anxiety or a fidget. They're just right? bubble poppers. Yeah. So they're made out of silicone. So imagine yes. one of those with the little fingertip things. People love using those with their paint droppers. Right. You use each one of those as like a little reservoir, like a little thing to put a couple drops of paint in and you dip your brush in there and blah, 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 blah. When it dries, you just pop it the other way. And the dry paint flops right off. right off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I think that's like a super cool idea. I saw that. Like I said, it just exploded one day on the internet for a couple of weeks. You couldn't stop seeing videos about it. I don't have one because the only ones I could find were colors. And what I really want is a white so that Mm. I can see what color the paint is. You know what I mean? Like if I stick it on a dark blue one or if I stick it on something yellow, it's going to change the way the paint looks and... I think that would, I want it, I want it to be perfect. So <laughs> I'm on the lookout for a white one of those. If anybody's right. uh, looking to, looking to hook me up. That's a, that's but, a good tip. You're right. It did. It did go like viral for a little yeah, while. Yeah. Like all of yeah. a sudden everybody was showing like, look at this cool idea. And I'm like, that is a super cool idea. And I tried to get one, but all that was left was big, bright colors for kids. Ah, I just need like a plain white one. <laughs> Well, there was a ton at the conference that I went to. They were, you know, you know how it is with conferences. The the vendors don't want to take stuff back with them. So they're like, here, take this, take this, take this. Uh-huh. And when I was a teacher, I would fill up bags of just pens and stuff oh, yeah. and just have all that stuff at the back of my classroom. Like, take it. I don't want it. But I don't have a classroom now, so I, I don't take. But there were some pretty sizable ones, but no white ones. I uh, would have remembered that. 
when I was an elementary school teacher, I had the coolest prize box because not only was it full of all those fun things from conferences, I also would get things like loot crate and those oh, right. kinds Your of things. And I'd like boxes, pick through yeah. and be like, oh, ooh, I like this and I like this for me. Everything else, dump in the prize box. Yes. So like yes. in, in the Mr. Cooper prize box, you could get like t-shirts. Like it was awesome. Oh, wow. Oh, we're down to our last category, Rob, and oh maybe the most my important gosh. one. Here we what go. about your What about your D and D nerd? Okay, me first. So the first thing I'm going to say is sixth edition is coming out soon. It is December 2023. Like yeah. we might be, we might have already gotten an announcement of when the new player's handbook is coming out by the time this episode airs don't buy a bunch of fifth edition stuff for your friend you'll see they're all on sale right now yes. like oh 60 off there's a reason don't buy them <laughs> <laughs> you, they're only they're not gonna last so so watch out don't get fooled by the uh by the fifth edition sales going on right now i think maybe last year i said a dnd beyond subscription I'm not you sure did. that sounds you like did. it. It's um, still a good tip. I'm still enjoying mine. The thing that's, I mean, one, I can make unlimited characters, which is great, especially for people who love making characters, which I was. These days, I got a lot going on. But when I was a young D&D player, like I could just sit and make a million characters. On my D&D Beyond account, there's like 740 characters because Andrew uses it and just whatever he can think of. I wonder if I can make that a D&D character and goes for it. So that's super fun. And the thing that I also enjoy is you get access to all of the little digital dice that they have when you're a member. Yes. So like when I play my Curse of Strahd game, I use the Curse of Strahd dice. And so when we play Rhyme <laughs> of the Frostbane, I use the Rhyme of the Frostbane dice. <laughs> like all this kind of stuff. So that's kind of fun. And it's it's a little thing, but over the course of the year, that discounted price of a hundred bucks or whatever, it goes a long way to for the yeah. convenience of it. But I think yeah, but I did talk about that last year. So I think I'm gonna double down on something we talk about a lot and say if I'm reflecting on like the single greatest influence that has been had on my D D game. It's the 3D printer. Oh, the 3D printer makes this game more fun. It makes the dungeons more fun to build. It makes the settings more fun to do. It has even encouraged me to move on and do other games. Like mm. I play other miniature games more easily and I'm more ready to do that because I know I have a cupboard full of awesome terrain that's going to work perfectly for it no right. matter what it is. So if you've got that D&D player and you've been playing D&D with somebody for a while and you're like rolling out the Chessex dry erase mat, just go with your gaming group. Get them a, get them, get them a little 3D printer, you know, and like get it started and see there are so many options out there. Just so many options for printers and it, or, and you know, if it's like a miniature person and they have the space for it, like a resin printer and just understand that, you know, you don't have to use Lego guys and quarters for your, for your little dudes yeah. on the table anymore. Yeah. You could, with this thing, you can basically print unlimited toys <laughs> to enhance your game and have fun even if you're not spending a bunch of time printing them just having those miniatures that you know spray them a color give them a dry brush and like there's a wizard that looks like a wizard and there's the fighter that looks like the fighter and here's the owl bear that looks like the owl bear instead of you know whatever it is that you're doing now like if it wasn't for 3d printing i would probably not have gotten so into dungeons and dragons of the games that i'm playing in my yeah. middle age just because it's unlocked that immersiveness and that those other aspects of the hobby to really just take it to the next level. I would also say even just a regular board gaming nerd, because yeah. there are files out there that you can print things to enhance games that already exist. Hero Quest, your Hero Quest board is an example of that. That's an extreme example, but <laughs> there, you found the file someone made and mm -hmm. created that board other than just the one you kind of unfold and use. There are, you know, the thing you did with Curse of Strahd is mm -hmm. take that tile that just would have been a, a 1D tile on your table and you printed the corresponding tile that looks exactly like it. So now when we pull out a tile, you're actually pulling out a 3D printed model of what that tile looks like. And it just enhances the game when you pull out a that's got skeletons hanging out the side of it like it really just creates that cool creep factor and it's got that um, sense so, of like i made it you know even though yeah, like like yeah. maybe i didn't design every aspect of it or do the 3d modeling or whatever it's like no i like i built a machine and i found this thing and i printed it and you know there's always troubleshooting and like i painted it up and organized everything like and now years later because we play castle ravenloft every year it's like four years later we're still pulling out those tiles like oh man i made that look how cool this looks yeah it's so cool <laughs> even some games that 
that that don't come with minis and you just have a little cardboard yeah. thing, you are likely to be able to find someone who's created a file to 100%. print that mini oh, yeah. instead of playing with a little cardboard meeple. But real quick, can you for for our listeners who aren't as savvy with D&D, um why are you listening to this podcast? No, I'm just kidding. But no, truth be told, we have some listeners that don't play D&D. Of course. Can, the real well, like brief USA thing about characters welcome exactly all nerds welcome the difference between previous editions and sixth edition of D&D you say mm-hmm. sixth edition is coming out so all the fifth edition stuff is going to go on sale it's not applicable to sixth to sixth edition because rules change and stuff right that'll be the idea right they're going to revamp everything and again this is like the sixth or seventh time actually nerd out it's probably the sixth edition is probably the eighth edition because yeah. there was yeah. a 3.5 and there was a oh, sure. fourth edition essentials that came out when they tried to fix things that had gotten out of hand. But yes, yeah, so your core Dungeons and Dragons books are going to be your player's handbook and your monster manual. And then to some extent, the Dungeon Master's Guide. And so those books will be refreshed first. So if you're looking at your fifth edition book and you're like, oh, okay, cool. I want to make this Dragonborn fighter. I get this, that, and the other. When you look at the sixth edition and you try to make your Dragonborn fighter like, oh, there's going to be different options or the numbers might be a little bit different and Got it. things like that. So yeah. It happens in in every game that's popular and has to keep going in perpetuity. They're going to keep coming out with additions because they got to make more money next year than they did this year. Well, and they also hope is that they're improving the game and gameplay for the users. But yes, money always drives the bottom line. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what. We were talking about LED lighting. I saw some dice online that are rechargeable dice and have LED lights inside of them. That would be so I have a friend who has these. Really? Are they amazing Uh, as they as amazing as they look? No, they're kind of (laughs) crappy. Sorry. Well, I say <laughs> if you have a D&D nerd, that's a great gift to give them because it's a novelty and there's yes. no way you're going to be able to get them dice that surprise them. This will surprise them, even if they already have a set. And I also, here's this part coming back. Get a spill-proof cup or mug for their gaming table so that when accidents do happen, it does not ruin gaming tables and materials and make things sticky and grow. Did you spill on your gaming table? On I didn't. No. Okay. No. I thought maybe this was. I thought maybe this was a confession about your no, new this pulled is, out gaming table. And I am constantly worried that I'm going to, especially like Final Girl that has minis, but like the game mats are neoprene. But mm-hmm. I have a lot of cards. Yeah, I have a lot of the board that you put on the little game location board you put on is cardboard mm-hmm. on the neoprene board. Like there's a lot of room for error. If I spill my drink on my table, I will be heartbroken if I spill like on on Final Girl or Mansions of Madness with all I the cardboard know. tiles. Like you ooh. notice, I always keep my drink like on another table. Different and I, like, table. Get up, yeah. Use it. One of the things I like about the table topper that I have is it has cup holders, but the cup holders clip to the outside. To the side. Yeah. So it's it's like if you were to accidentally knock it off, you'd knock it on the floor, not into the bezeled game table. I don't use those at your house anymore because I'm waiting for the moment that I take my like drink uh-huh. and I go to put it in the thing and miss it and it topples onto the game anyway. <laughs> this could happen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I that's why I just go to the other table, too, or I'll stand up and stand back like I'm at Las Vegas, <laughs> like I'm gambling in Vegas and you go to use your phone. You've got to step off the table and step away from it. That's what I do with a drink at your game table. I'll step All away. Right. With my little drink the hand. board gamers know it does it takes nothing it takes the yeah. l- the slightest spill to ruin one of those like dungeon tiles or one of those yep. cards and, and it'll never be the forever. same it'll always be warped you'll always yep. be like oh everything's looking flat except this one jacked up yep. one if you ever do spill on your game even if you have protective card sleeves the spill will always hit go inside the direction yep. of the open mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. go right inside there yep so a spill proof mug or cut for your D nerd for their game table would also be a good gift for them That's our guide for this year, y'all. If you were looking for something to get your favorite nerd best friends, subscribing to our Patreon would be amazing. That would be huge. That would be the greatest gift that you could give. Um, Imagine the hundreds of listeners to this show all deciding that they were going to give a $3 Patreon subscription to nerd best friends. What a Christmas miracle. Or even if you want to subscribe to Patreon, you want to start an account, it's not your thing. A one-time holiday donation would be awesome through Venmo at Nerd Best Friends. A little Christmas bonus for you nerds.
Okay, Rob, we're back at it. What's the nerdiest thing you did this week? Oh boy. This was one of those weeks, Annalise, where things got moved around a little bit and boy did five D&D games in four days. Oh my gosh. Straight back to back. Oh my gosh. Like quit my job. I'm a full-time dungeon master. (laughs) (laughs) If I got paid every time I rolled the dice. Oh my gosh. If I had a nickel for every D20 I rolled that week, I'd have like You'd have 25 cents. (laughs) Yeah, so five D&D games. It started on a Saturday, Saturday morning. We played our Ice Fire Peak game that we have yes. on Saturdays. Then that evening, I went down to a friend's house where Adam is running, Adam from the Marching Band episode is running yes. Rise of Tiamat. And then the next day, Sunday, we uh, we had a makeup game. We don't usually play on Sundays, oh, but we yes, had yeah. a makeup game for Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. And Thanks, then Adam. Monday, the next week started where we had our regular Monday game where we're doing that second edition where Black Rose is blue. And then Tuesday, our regular Tuesday game. Wow. <laughs> Every day, some days, twice, just bam, 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 bam. And wow. I run a lot of those games. So I was trying to keep <laughs> stuff straight. And... <laughs> What do I have to pack? What do I have to get ready? Where's this book? Where's that? Does, wait, but you might have had six games because Wednesday we played. Not that Wednesday. Not that because week. Because that okay. was the, All right. we had missed the Wednesday. That's why we played on Sunday. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got so it. it did go Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And then it was an off week for the Wednesday. We never play on Thursday and Friday, but then we were back on on that Saturday. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back to the regular right. schedule. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. That's intense. <laughs> Aren't you glad it's not every week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just it is it's too much right it's like yeah. be, especially because it's like coordinating with people and getting together with friends it's not like right. no no laundry got done that weekend no housework <laughs> got done that weekend. <laughs> i found myself behind in some areas like for sure i didn't see my family very much that weekend <laughs> <you know? laughs> so oh, no, you man. can't do it every week but every once in a while it just works out that way and this this was one of them so yeah <laughs> D D nerd to the max wow how about you? Nerdiest thing you did this week. Nerdiest thing I did this week. We mentioned earlier in our opening about missing an episode. Well, part of the reason why we missed that episode is, yes, my new job is busy and I'm trying to find the right times to squeeze in the editing of our episodes. But really, I played hooky for a weekend, <laughs> made my way down to best friend's house, and we had a weekend of foolery and gaming, and we p- played the... We got rocked in the Curse of Strahd board game. Just, oh. it was horrible rolling. We did. We, we lost. We got rocked. We got rocked we in Mansions of Madness. Bad. We got, we got oh, we flat can. out like slaughtered in Mansions of Madness by the towns, townsfolk in Innsmouth. Like good gaming weekend. It was so much fun hanging out. And seeing Thank my, goodness my best friend for like great restaurants and good beers and stuff because when it came to the game, we just got absolutely trampled. <laughs> it's so true. And great weather in Santa Barbara. Yeah. And we got to, I, I brought our, we went in together like two years ago for Marvel Zombies. Right. And one of the funniest moments of the weekend is like open, opening these three boxes and going like, I thought we, we got a low level, right? Like we got a low level and we turned over I that box. I expected more. I'll be honest. When I saw just the three boxes, I was like, oh, I expected there to be like six or seven boxes. Good for us. We didn't get out of control. And then we looked in the boxes and saw there's 270 something minis between those three boxes. It's like we pull out the main game and it's like, (laughs) oh, wow, there's a lot of minis in this game. It's like, oh, man, cool mini or not. They sure do a great job. So that must be the, the game plus all the stretch goals. And then the stretch goal box came out. (laughs) That was intense. I I think we actually opened that, that we did get the X-Men resistance expansion. So we opened that one second and go like, oh, this has just as many as the core game, but it's look at all these X-Men characters. It's so cool. It's got like the Iceman, like blue clear plastic and the Phoenix is all like orange fire. Phoenix is amazing. And seeing the zombie versions Mm -hmm. of those Marvel characters, uh, they're going to be so much fun to paint. But then we had this, what is this other box and we flipped it over and it's just a wall of minis Mm -hmm. that box alone has like 200 minis Uh uh-huh you took your calculator out it was something like almost 300 minis total i think the stretch goal box alone was like 186 yeah it's absurd (laughs) it's absurd but that was a fun part of the weekend too but so no editing got done that weekend that's why we were late on the on our marching band episode Uh, we'll try not to let it happen again but i can't promise we're not going to nerd more than we edit podcasts sometimes but 
But I will also say, I think I mentioned this about this time last year as well. I've always been a big fan of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame cer- ceremony. It was always done, recorded way early and then shown a month later, like on HBO. I- I'd have to find ways to find clips of it. Well, Disney Plus ran it live, which I don't know that that's Ooh. ever happened for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I didn't watch it live because I was at a conference, but I came home and like just doing laundry and catching up from the conference. I put Disney Plus on and I'm just such a big fan of how they do this ceremony it's always a mix of artists coming together to celebrate person being inducted the inductee class this year i mean as we get older i imagine we're going to have more connection to them anyways but just phenomenal people cheryl crow kate bush Mm -hmm. missy elliott george michael Mm -hmm. willie nelson rage against the machine the spinners dj cool herc and he's really like he's known as hip-hop's founding father some of the very first hip-hop parties in the 70s were him and from him was born hip hop and rap and, and, and Shaka Khan. I mean, wow. And then there's, I mean, Don Cornelius, uh, Bernie Toppin, A.L. Cooper, Link Ray. These are all guys that are behind the scenes guys that if you played songs that they helped produce and create, you would know who they are, but they're not necessarily name known, but Shaka Khan's on stage with her and Cheryl Crow's on stage with Stevie Nicks and Peter Frampton. And they bring out yeah. um Adam Levine. There's a singer I've never heard of named Miguel, but he was really good. And who else? Carrie Underwood did a did the tribute for George Michael. Like just these mix of artists that come and celebrate these well-known people is just always phenomenal. So I nerded mm-hmm. out about that over last week too, watching the, the rock and roll. Hall of Fame and just always I'm such a nerd about pop culture music that mm-hmm. it's always cool for me to see and they always do a really good job making vignettes about their stories too okay um, sure so those are cool to see too so I nerd yeah. out about that awesome Every season, we choose a nerd show, series, or film to explore. On our next episode, we time jump around the 1980 series Quantum Leap, starring Scott Bakula. Quantum Leap, one of the greatest shows in the history of science fiction. I absolutely can't wait. Oh boy, it's going to be a good one. Oh boy. Oh boy. Remember to subscribe, share, and give us that five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media platforms at Nerd Best Friends or send a message by writing to podcast at nerdbestfriends.com. That be it. We did. That's, it. It's time to go. It's good. It's early December. You got like 20 more days. <laughs> Happy to, holidays. Thanks. For get your thing. holiday gifts. See you next time, nerds. Annalise has gotten up to do something, probably let an animal out or into a room. Annalise, you'll hear this later, I guess, when you're editing the podcast. Uh, I'm going to finish my beer and then, oh, you're back.